ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اقرارا بربوبيته وارغاما لمن جحد به وكفر كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والاكرام واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا وقره اعيننا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه اما بعد عباد الله فاني اوصيكم ونفسي المخطئه بتقوى الله واحثكم على طاعته واحذركم مبالع صيانه ومخالفه امره فمن يعمل مثقال ذره خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى يقول الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ويقول عز من قائل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون اما بعد all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. And my brothers in Islam, I encourage myself and you to fear number Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah your Lord states in the Holy Quran. All those who believe fear Allah, fear Allah the way you should be feared and do not die unless you are in the state of Islam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah al hasr all those who believe, fear Allah and be observant. Be observant of what you're going to offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you, and your actions and your deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of everything that you do. My brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls upon mankind and Allah says, يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم او مان كايند سنا ذا ادريسنج اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى اند ذا كول اوف الله عز وجل از نوت اونلي تارجتينج مسلمز اند بيليفرز بت الله سبحانه وتعالى از كولينج ابون اول هيز سيرفنتس مسلمز اند نون مسلمز because every single creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether the locker or not, they are the servants of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal is calling upon them and Allah Azza wa says, O oh mankind, O oh people, we had created you from male and female. So the first call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the first lesson out of this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to understand that our fabric is made out of a male and a female. Men and women, boys and girls, male and female. Inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'annaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu. We made you into different tribes, different nations for you to know one another. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaakum. So now overall, we had created you from a male, we had created you from a female, we had made you from Arabs and non-Arabs, we made you black and white, we made you rich and poor, we made you strong and weak, but at the end of the day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum, that the most honorable one to Allah is the one that feeds Allah most. So it's not based 
over your gender, it's not based over your ethnicity, it's not based over your nationality, it's not based over your race, it's not based over your wealth, it's based over your righteousness and piety. That the most honorable one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, in the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most. So you could be a man and you could surpass everyone else, but at the same time, you could be a woman and you could surpass everyone else. For that in Islam, we do believe in the concept of equality. And sharing that respect between a male and a female, men and women. And a man doesn't have any superiority over a woman, a woman doesn't have a superiority over a man. What makes you superior over anyone else, whether to be a gender, ethnicity, race, culture, nationality, wealth, it's your taqwa, piety, righteousness. It comes before everything and everyone. Your scale of respect and honor is the scale of taqwa. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٍ And the garment of taqwa, the garment of righteousness and piety is the most absolute and the greatest of all things. My brothers in Islam, Islam came to honor women. Islam came to uplift the status of women in society. Especially during a time and an era where women were so degraded and dishonored. Not only amongst Arabs, that misunderstand it. Not only amongst Arabs, amongst Arabs and non-Arabs. Not only within the Eastern culture, amongst the Eastern, Eastern culture and even amongst the Western culture during that time. But then Islam came to elevate her, came to honor her. Give her the status that she's due, she's due for. Give her the respect that she's due for. Honor her, the honor that she deserves. Especially, especially during a time, especially during a period where a woman was so degraded, so dishonored, that if a man, if a father, he's been informed that his wife just gave birth to a girl, to a baby girl, he'll go and bury her alive. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran al-Kareem وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ And the innocent baby girl when she's buried بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ Why was she killed? Why was she even murdered? Because she's a female? Because she's a girl? Well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored her status. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the honor and the respect that she deserves. Why do you kill your daughters for? That was the culture amongst the Arabs. But again, it wasn't only amongst Arabs. According to some European cultures, if a husband passes away, they used to bury his wife with him. You have no rights to continue living after him. I'm talking thousands of years ago. It was a very degrading society, especially when it came to dealing with women. But then Islam 1,400 years ago, came and re-honored, I'm not going to say honored, but re-honored women. Why? Because from the time of Adam alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the first human being, and that's Adam alayhi salam, Allah honored women from them. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made women partners of men. As, a, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and nisa'u shaqa'iqu rijal That women are partners of men. They are your partners. They have equal rights like you. And you have equal rights like them. They have equal respect like you and you have equal respect like them. So whether you like it or not, if the Creator Allah honors them, you are the creation, you must honor them. And you have no rights to dishonor them. You have no rights to degrade them. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights upon you that you honor your women. Whether they are to be your mother, your daughter, your sister, your wife, your auntie. Enough said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended and ordered so many times, even when he was on his deathbed and during his hajjat al-wada'a, the farewell sermon, is tawsu bin nisa'i khayra. 
take care of your women. Take care of your women. And when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, take care of your women, he refers to your wife too. Not only your mother, your mother, your wife, your sister, your daughter, your niece, your auntie, your grandmother, any woman in society. Islam commands and orders that you honor them, you respect them, you take care of them. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَا أَكْرَمَهُنَّ إِلَّا كَرِيمٌ وَمَا أَهَانْهُنَّ إِنَّا إِلَّا لَئِيمٌ Only an honorable, generous, kind person that looks after them. And only a mean, evil person that dis dis disrespects them or dishonors them. It is our Islamic obligation it is our Islamic duty upon us as men that we take care of our women. And part of taking care of our women that we look after them and give them their rights. Where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he says about him as a husband. And he's calling upon all husbands and he says alayhi salatu wassalam, khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you are those best to their families and I am the messenger of Allah, I am the best to my family. If you want to be the best of believers in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you must be the best of husbands to your wives. You must be the best of fathers to your daughters. You must be the best of sons to your mothers. You must be the best of brothers to your sisters. A man comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he says to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who has more rights over my friendship? Who has more rights to be the closest of people to me and for me to take care of him? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Your mother, Ummuk. So this companion says, Then who? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa replies again, he says, Ummuk, your mother. And then this companion asks again and he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, then who? So this companion says, after he asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Messenger of Allah, the new, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replies back to him the third time, Ummu, your mother. And then the fourth time, this companion says, Oh, Messenger of Allah, the new. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the fourth time, he says, Abak, Thumma Abak. Your mother, your mother, your mother, then your father. Why didn't the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reply the second time that this companion had asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, then who? Your father. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, repeated the first time, your mother, then the second time, your mother, then the third time, your mother, then the fourth time, your father. For us to understand the importance of this woman in your life. For us to understand the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given this woman. And your mother is your mother now. Your mother is your mother now, but your mother is also a wife of your father. And you no know one likes to see their mother to be dishonored or disrespected. And you have a sister that she's also a wife of someone else. And your daughter will be a wife of someone else. So your wife is also a daughter, a sister, or a mother of someone else. So respect them and give them the respect that I do. Give them the respect that they deserve. And that's part of your iman. It is part of measuring your Iman. Part of your Iman is that either you respect your wife, you respect your daughter, you respect your mother. It's that Iman that you measure. So if you are that type of person that disrespects his wife and even goes even a step further than that and lowers himself to even lay a hand on his wife, then that's lack of Iman in your life. That's dishonor and disrespect. Not only to your wife, but to Islam and to the entire nation. And a degrading person degrades them. A dishonorable person dishonors them. It's our responsibility as Muslims to respect and admire women in our lives, whether they are our daughters, our mothers, and in particular our wives. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeats it so many times, Istawsu bin nisa'i khayra. Take care of your women. Take care of your wives. When he was even on his deathbed, what do people usually remind people or remind of others or their followers or their kings of when they're on their deathbed? The most important of things in their lives. 
And from amongst the important of things that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reminded his nation of when he was on his deathbed and during Hajjat al Wada, the farewell sermon, وسلم, reminded the companions to take care of their wives. Take care of him. Look after him. So much so that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِي النِّسَاءِ فِي اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ In what you have from women. In other words, في Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your wives and take care of them. فَإِنَّكُمْ أَخَذْتُمُوهُنَّ بِأَمَانَةِ اللَّهِ وَاسْتَحْلَلْتُمْ فُرُوجَهُنَّ بِكَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu continues to say that you've taken them. They became your wives with the trust of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So your wife is a trust that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had entrusted you with before her father, before her brother, before her family. And when you mess around with that trust, you are messing around with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because your wife is a trust in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah had entrusted you with. And when you dishonor them and disrespect them, then this is a disrespect to your Lord. Because when you dishonor and disrespect a trust, you are disrespecting the one that had entrusted you with that trust. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, describes in the Amanatullah, the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you look at your wife, don't look at her just a wife, but look at her as a trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had entrusted you with. Look at her as a partner, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith. They share everything with you. They share your life. They share your happy moments, your sad moments. They share the easy days and the hard days. Take care of them, honor them. And one of the most degrading things one of the most degrading qualities that a man can ever, ever have is for him to lay a finger on his wife. Yes, all husbands and wives disagree. Everyone disagrees with their spouse. Even the Prophet Muhammad disagreed with his spouse. But that doesn't give you the right for you to lay a hand on them. Islam does not accept that at all. And Islam looks down upon someone who lays a hand on his wife. Islam does not condone any form of violence upon your family. On the contrary, Islam condemns that. Islam rejects that and does not allow it or condone it in any form or any shape. You have a responsibility. And if you disagree with your wife, deal with her in an adult manner. You don't want to continue with her, then you could terminate the contract if things don't work out. But for you to lay a hand on her, that's not a quality of a man. Subhanallah, some people have the misunderstanding of a man. They think that for being a man and part of your manhood is for you to lay a hand on your wife. That's not the character of a manhood because it is someone who is more manhood than you. And that's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ever he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laid a finger on his wives. That's not the character of a believer. On the contrary, that's a character of an evil person as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentions in the hadith. That's not a character of someone who has good volume or a man of iman in his life. But that's, that's a character of someone who is lacking iman. Because iman teaches you to restrain yourself. Iman teaches you to restrain yourself and control yourself. And the first of people that you need to control yourself with is your wife, your family. And unfortunately, it's becoming widespread, not within the Muslim community, but I believe it is one of the most smallest things that's happening in the Muslim community because we believe as Muslims it is haram, it's wrong, it's not accepted. But it's becoming widespread amongst people. Domestic violence, where people let out their frustration on their wives or their family. Not only that, not only that are physically abusing them, but people are even dying because of that. Islam would never ever accept something like that. Islam came to honor you and honor her together. Islam came to honor men and women together. And that's why one of the greatest indications that we learn from is that the first person to embrace Islam on the hands of the Prophet Muhammad was his wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. 
What lesson do we learn out of that is for us to understand that Islam shares the responsibility and the duty of it, the duty of Islam upon men and women. Subhanallah, these are some of the lessons that we learn. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the first person to embrace Islam on the hands of the Prophet Muhammad to be a female. And the first blood to be shed for Islam and die for Islam, it was a blood of a female, Sumayya. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was the first to shed blood and die as a shaheedah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This also implies the importance of the role of women in Islam. During the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu women shared the responsibility of the da'wah, the responsibility of jihad, the responsibility of the state, the responsibility of many other things. The responsibility of education, the responsibility of social affairs. Women shared that responsibility with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to honor them. Islam came to give them that respect that they had in the past, but then it diminished throughout time, but then Islam came to revive it again. And that's why Aaron say Islam came to honor them, but Islam came to re-honor them again. Because they were honored from the very beginning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. When Allah azza wa jal created Hawa alayhi salam from Adam alayhi salam in the paradise, in the Jannah. For that, my brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that we take care of our wives. And we take care of our women, whether they are to be our wives, our daughters, our mothers, our sisters. Islam came to honor them. And only a dishonorable person would dishonor them. And only an honorable person will honor them. Only a believer will honor a woman. And only someone who lacks iman or a disbeliever will dishonor a woman. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفروا النا والغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشكره وهو الذي وعد المزيد لمن شكر وأصلي وأسلم وأبارك على النبي المعتبر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد my brothers in Islam when you hear the biography of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his dealings with his wives, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi didn't have one wife, but at one stage in Nabi sallallahu alayhi had nine wives. If you look at the interaction and the dealings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with his wives, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a very, very, very and extremely good husband. At the same time, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a great leader and a great teacher and a great messenger and a great prophet. But at the same time, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a great husband. When the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speak about the character of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam and describe how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was towards them, you are talking about someone, not only he looked after his wives and not only he took care of the affairs of his wife, he was so romantic too. That's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much so that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come out of his way just to come for his wives. The Aisha says the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raced with me, raced. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam challenged me in a race twice. The first time I won against him, the second time he won against me. Can you imagine if you do that with your wife these days that you don't even want to walk next to your wife because you don't want people to look at you and say, oh, he's walking next to his wife. Manu rijjal, he's not a man. Some people have that perception. And it is a cultural, a cultural perception. But that's not an Islamic perception. You're not better than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took care of the affairs of his wives. He took care of his wives. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. He honored them. He gave them the respect that they deserve. And he is what? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. Whatever he'll say alayhi salatu wa sallam will happen. But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to lead by an example. And him leading by an example was he alayhi salatu wa sallam to act upon what he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had encouraged his ummah. Khayrukum khayrukum li ahli wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you are those best to their women. The best of you are those the best to their families. And I am the best to my family. And he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the best to his family. He was the best to his family. If you read some of the things that the Prophet Muhammad used to do, you'll be amazed. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't talk a lot about that. 
But in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you read about his character, and how Saru sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was towards his wives, how romantic he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was towards his wife sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's him. There's a narration that Aisha says, I asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, or oh, Messenger of Allah, has your love towards me? And this is an authentic narration. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it is like a string that's been tied, a very strong knot. No one can untie it. That once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he's amongst the companions, Aisha will say to him, our oh, Messenger of Allah, has that knot? So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, still firmly tied. That's the character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the man. If you want to really look up to someone who is a man, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to talk about manhood, that's the Prophet, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to talk about a brave man, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to talk about a warrior, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to talk about a worshipper, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to talk about a true servant of Allah, that's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he alayhi salatu wa sallam was a respectful husband to his wives. Never ever laid a finger on his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No matter what the case is, no matter what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard from his wives, because that's a character of a true man and a true believer. My brothers in Islam, we as Muslims, Islam came to honor every single individual. Islam came to honor me, came to honor you, and came to honor every single individual. Islam came to honor men and women. Islam came to honor every single human being. If people knew what Islam is about, wallahi, they'll have no other option except for them to embrace Islam. But unfortunately, sometimes we present Islam in a wrong way. By Allah, if people just know and understand the reality of Islam and the teachings of Islam and the guidance of Islam, they'll have no other option and say except to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. But sometimes the problem is within us. We're not presenting Islam in the best presentation. When we present Islam or portray Islam in the best presentation, then you find people flocking to Islam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear and follow the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all actions and all matters. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. <laughs> Yeah, la, 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 la